Uh, so Snarl says, uh, decimated something relatively thin, the decimation made the faces intersect each other. But uh, you can see here, see how we're getting very, very thin faces here? We can dynamesh this, and sometimes, uh, like if I dynamesh this now, you're going to see it starts, it puts a hole there. Uh, if you want, you can go through here and you can do an inflate, and then it'll inflate that hole together. You can also go in here, through here and use something I call like spackle. So we can go through here and just grab a base primitive, hit W. Uh, what you can do is you can throw in... What we're basically doing is we're putting in a little sphere, and I'm using this sphere like a little glob of clay just to kind of fill in this bad area here. Control drag, control drag again, and now that's kind of worked out. You can go in here with your H polish brush, and you can make these surfaces a little bit nicer. Now, the reason that happens sometimes is like Snarl was saying, if you go through here and you have a thin object, so we'll grab a cube, make polymesh 3D, we'll go ahead and thin this out, we'll go ahead and uh, dynamesh this. So we've got our Dynamesh object here, we're ready to start sculpting on it. So let's say, okay, I'm going to grab my clay brush, and I'll make it really big, and I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to start making like some sort of button. I'm going to hold down Alt and push this in, and then now we've got this kind of shape, and I control drag, and it's like, oh, what happened? Everything's splitting apart, and now it's like, oh, I got any, I don't want to have to spackle that. That's kind of a pain in the butt, because I'd have to go in here and grab like a cylinder and try and fit it into here. And actually, if I was making that shape, I probably would use Z-Modeler, but now you've got to kind of go through here and do something like this. And we'll get to how to get rid of that faceting in just a second. But in order to avoid this, we go back to our plane here, and we're using our clay brush. And as you start sculpting with your clay brush, it's going to be pulling in through the other side. That's what's re uh, making that happen. So for all these brushes over here, turn on back face masking. And now when you're sculpting here, going to leave the back faces alone. It automatically masks anything that's away from the camera, like so. If you have that off, it's going to suck through, and then you're going to get that. So that's one way to avoid that. Um, I suppose another way to avoid that, if you don't have back face masking on, is you can hold down Control shift hold down Alt, and that'll uh, hide that those back faces, so you can manually go through, and you can hide those back faces, and then hold down Control shift and tap to bring everything else back, and now when you Control drag uh, to Dynamesh, it'll update another way to do it. And of course, manually, you can mask. You can hold down control and mask the back. Oops. Hold down control, mask the back, control tap to invert that mask if you want to. All of this is in your masking menu. And all of these things, it's like, I want to mask. I want to control tap to invert that mask. Uh, I want to control tap here to blur it. I want to control alt tap to tighten it up. Or you can just do this. You can also do uh, grow mask and then shrink mask. So you can, uh, let's do a sharpen, and then shrink, and then grow, sharpen. You can get shapes like that. Uh, a lot of, and there's a lot of implications you can do with masking. I don't want to make this too much of an intro course. I'm going to have intro videos coming out pretty soon. But anyway, to avoid that, make sure you have back face masking on.